TV producer, self-publicist, and environmentalist Frank Mathers has drowned in a submarine accident. Mr. Mathers, who was obsessed by undersea exploration, was testing a new submarine in the ocean near Polito Bay when the submarine sank and is believed to have broken apart. Mr. Mathers claimed to have great affinity with the ocean. He is survived by his wife, Abigail. I find the ocean to be an amazing yet terrifying place. It could be right in front of you and yet feel an entire world removed. As much as it can be wonderful, it can also be a deep, dark place, housing secrets, mysteries, and maybe sometimes answers. In today's video, it may prove to be the latter. As in today's video, we're returning to Grand Theft Auto V yet again to investigate the fate of a bloke in a submersible, a mode of transport unlikely to win any popularity contests these days. Join us as we dive into the details of the Strangers and Freaks mission, Death at Sea. To unlock this mission, there are some parameters that need to be met. Firstly, Trevor needs to purchase the Sonar Collections Dock, which grants us access to the submersible and a dinghy, and will allow us to collect all kinds of nuclear waste found in the waters. Secondly, we need to be past the main story mission known as Blitzplay, as this is the moment where Frank Mather's death will start circulating the in-game news sources. It's through this that we learn that Frank Mathers was a TV producer, self-publicist and environmentalist, obsessed with the premise of deep sea exploration, who died in an accident that occurred while testing a new submarine. One that is believed to have sank near Polito Bay, and for lack of a better term, dismantled itself. With that in mind, the third parameter for accessing this mission is to head to Trevor's new docks to a blue question mark indicating that we need to be playing as Michael. Upon arrival, we'll notice a woman staring off into the distance on the docks. And should you get close enough, she will ask Michael for aid. Can you help me? Approaching the woman will result in the following cutscene. Hello. Hello. Thank God you stopped. Uh, were you a fan of Frank Mathers? Frank Mathers? The TV guy who used to do the shows about space until he became obsessed with undersea exploration? No, not a huge fan. Frank was my husband. By not a huge fan, I mean not a huge fan as much as a fanatic. He was a cruel and heartless man. Well, like I said, I was not a huge fan. But I loved him. Didn't he leave his sick wife and five kids to run off with you? We loved each other. I'm sure he did. And I'm penniless now, more or, or less. Well, Frank's submarine broke apart while he was trying to save the San Andreas White Shark. But his body was never found. You know, people thought someone tampered with the airlocks. That's an outright lie. That was never proven. I love Frank, and Frank loved me, which is why we invested so much money in life insurance. If we could just prove that Frank was dead and that the airlocks weren't tampered with, I would sleep so much easier. I bet you would. I'll make it very worth your while. Guess I could take a look. Now that was a very suspicious encounter. The wife of Frank Mathers wants us to prove that her husband is dead so she can claim on the life insurance. Abigail Mathers also disclosed that she's penniless and completely shoots down the notion that Frank's submarine may have been sabotaged. But now we have her contact details, maybe ringing her will give us more information to go off. You've reached Abigail Mathers. Please leave a message if you have any information relating to Frank's death rather than going to the police. Boy, she's really making this obvious, asking anyone who's cool she doesn't pick up that if they have any information regarding Frank's death, to contact her and not go to the police. This leaves us with one question, why is she freezing out law enforcement too? And to top it all off, she also appears to have a low opinion of her late husband, and with him conveniently dead in a submarine accident that's suspected to be sabotage. Her priority appears to be acquiring money from life insurance. It's very clear what the game is implying. Abigail Mathers knows much, much more than she's letting on. Regardless, for now we have an objective to follow, to use the red dinghy to search for the submarine pieces found around the sea, I guess. 
Provided you're on the dinghy, the game will give you markers to follow, massively simplifying the search for 30 individual pieces. And when you get closer, the sonar will guide you to where you need to dive. The pieces are seldom far from other wreckages, which is interesting. There are planes, ships, other submarines, and among these wrecks we can find parts of the submarine. Fortunately, there aren't 30 individual search sites, as often several pieces are found in the same place, which allows you to, I suppose, explore the wreckages that are already there where the submarine pieces can be found, and also elevates your risk of having to engage a shark in a knife fight. Chances are Steve Irwin would have been mortified, but we do what we have to. Nonetheless, simply put, collecting all of the submarine pieces is a piece of piss, and you really don't need a guide to do it. It is a smidge tedious, but that's what happens when you've got to pick up 30 collectibles. Nonetheless, it's not the worst collectible chase this game throws at you, and you can enjoy some up-close and personal contact with sea life that may or may not eat you. But collecting the final submarine piece, which can be done out of order, but you'll probably do it in order, you will unlock a phone call conversation with Abigail Mathers. Hello? So, I think I got the pieces from Frank's sub. You did? That's wonderful news. Can you meet me back on the pier at Polito Cove? I can, but the thing is... Well, I'll tell you in person. It would seem Michael has made a discovery that we as the player are not privy to yet, leaving us with one final task of returning to the docks where we met Abigail Mathers the first time where undoubtedly it's time for a chat with a rather soggy Michael. I've been waiting so long for this day. Hey, I found it. Well, here's the good stuff. Oh, you precious, precious man. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, I think the airlocks were tampered with. No, no, that's just normal wear and tear. It may surprise you to learn that along with being a beautiful, finely put together woman, I am also an expert in nautical engineering and glass degradation. <sighs> yeah, but I mean, look, it's... Oh. Looks like Frank tried to scratch a message in with his last dying breath. It says, someone tampered with the airlocks. Air How can that be? My poor... Frank, it must have been his ex-wife, very bitter woman. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about that. I'm not a detective, you know, but something doesn't ring true here. No, no, I know. The police are in on it. I'm going to take this to the FIB. They'll know what to do. Yeah, well, that's your business. Hey, ho, whoa! whoa. You said you're gonna make it worth my while. Yes, yes. This should be plenty for your time and discretion. It's 10 bucks. Oh. Here's a signed photo of Frank. He was a lovely person. You would have been great friends. He loved his fans. I've got to get going to the FIB, I mean. You gotta be fucking kidding me. The revelation that the submarine was indeed tampered with appears to be a bit of a shock to the self-professed nautical engineer's insistence that that wasn't the case. No longer able to deny foul play, Abigail Mathers becomes alarmed. And though we know she's searching for proof that Frank was dead so she could claim on life insurance, and she also indirectly told us she was capable of tampering with the submarine's airlocks, and yet still accuses Mather's ex-wife, and also out of nowhere drops a bomb that the police are somehow in on it. This complete unsettle more or less confirms what was fairly obvious from the start. She is the one deliberately responsible for her husband's death. And for all our hard work, we got $10. I wish I could have given you more, but the life insurance people have been such snakes. Finally, the closure I deserve. It's been a long time coming. I trust I can count on your discretion. In fact, probably best just to forget all about it. Well, thank you again for your chivalry, but I'll handle it from here. We have a choice from here on out. We can let Abigail Mathers live, and supposedly she'll go to the FIB. But in truth, she'll go straight to Los Santos Airport and disappear. Or we can simply kill her for killing her husband and or for paying us inadequately. If we chase her for a bit, she'll spout more nonsense. Some Frank Mathers fan you are! I'm going straight to the police, I promise! I didn't do it! She just further contradicts herself and leaves us with one clear objective. Slap a sticky bomb on a car and pit maneuver her into oblivion. And with that, we've served some lukewarm justice. 
If you let her reach the airport without attempting to hinder her and only simply follow, she will claim that you're harassing her as she's a widow and you'll get a three star wanted level. Furthermore, her attempts to escape the game map effectively further confirms her guilt because she shows no true interest in allowing the authorities to know there is proof that the submarine was indeed sabotaged and the only reason you'd want that information to not be known is if you had something to hide. As for Abigail Mather's motivation behind the killing, well not only in your first encounter with her does she claim Frank Mathers was a cruel and heartless man, but she's also rather open about her intent to claim on his life insurance. In other words, Frank Mathers was simply worth more to her dead than alive. And what better place to be shot of him than the place he loved the most? Out at sea, where it's easier to make something look like an accident, especially when you know a thing or two about nautical engineering. But what let Abigail Mathers down in this premeditated murder was her inability to convincingly tell a lie. And furthermore, her apparent greed as she only paid Michael $10 for his hard work searching for these answers. And being something of a murderer himself, I'm sure that's the less forgivable of the two sins bringing us nicely to the end of today's short video. There wasn't a lot off the rails to actually discover about this one, but I suppose it's a decent stopgap between one interesting mystery and the next. Thank you all for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff, but there are no obligations there, I just massively appreciate it. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another bit of content in the near future, but until then, Please take care and goodbye.